So for this video, I've collected a bunch of different tips, tricks, and a list of features in Unity that you're gonna need to hear about and probably even use when making 2D games. And this is gonna be very exciting because no matter if you're an intermediate or a total beginner to either Unity or game development, I think you're gonna be able to find something useful in this video. So we're gonna get into it in just a moment, but first, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business ranging from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics. As game makers, it's very important for us to allocate most of our time onto building our actual game and polishing our project. Squarespace makes it very easy to create and maintain an online presence for your game and your game studio to ensure that you're always connected to your players. Squarespace allows you to have a full overview of your site's traffic so you can measure how your online presence performs and how it helps with sales or downloads on your game. You can also use Squarespace to easily purchase domains, create a website with videos and other imageries of promoting your game, and add more functions to your site such as user comments and scheduled posts. Make sure to go to the link in the description or simply squarespace.com for a free trial now. And when you're ready to launch, head over to squarespace.com forward slash Saiku or the link in the description once again and save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. All right, so without further ado, open up Unity and let's learn some cool new things. So to begin with, I want to say that Unity is quickly moving towards the new scriptable render pipeline, which allows you to control and tailor rendering in Unity. They have a couple of templates for this, and the one you should definitely use if you're making 2D games now is the Lightweight Render Pipeline. Lightweight Render Pipeline has a bunch of new 2D features, and it's more optimized for mobile and 2D games. And just for your information, the other template is called High Definition Render Pipeline, or HDRP for short, which you might have heard heard of before. However, HDRP is more desktop and high quality console game oriented, so that won't be very interesting for you when you make 2D games. In order to get started with the Lightweight Render Pipeline, you need to install it into your project. So if you don't have a project right now, you can either pick it when you create a new project using Unity Hub, or if you do have a project already, you can open up the package manager and install it into your project. And now that you know about the Lightweight Render Pipeline and how to get started with it, Unity recently also introduced a 2D renderer, which is a part of it. So essentially, up until now, we have been pretty much doing 2D work in a 3D renderer. So when we added lights to our scene, for instance, they were all 3D lights in a 2D environment, which wasn't very big of a problem, but it was also not very performant for a 2D game. Now with the 2D renderer, we're also introduced to 2D lights. As a matter of fact, I actually have a full tutorial on how to get started with the 2D lights, and I'm going to link it in the description if you guys are interested, but as a high-level guide on how to get started still, because I don't want to ignore it in this video, um, in order to get the 2D render working, make sure you install version 6.7.1 or above of the Lightweight Render Pipeline. After installing that very specific version of the Lightweight Render Pipeline, we can go into Create in the Project window and then pick Rendering, Lightweight Render Pipeline, and here we're gonna have something new called 2D Renderer. And then we just have to change the render type of our Lightweight Render Pipeline asset file to Custom and then put in the new 2D Render asset file that we just created. Unity have also made some 2D light sources that you can use after you install this package, which is fantastic. Moving on, Unity also has another new package that was introduced last year. So this one is called Vector Graphics, and it's basically integrating support for SVG files into Unity. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, and they can be used in your 2D games instead of only using textures. The pros of using SVG files over textures is that they offer efficiency gains in terms of file size and performance. Large textures for sprites, like for characters, would potentially be using larger amounts of memory than vectors. For example, if we use a screen-wide vector graphic, it would only be a few hundred bytes in size and still look amazing and very sharp. If we were to try achieve the same size and quality with a bitmap texture with 1080 pixels in resolution, it could cost us around 4 megabytes in size. Now for one file, it doesn't make a big difference, I know, but if you're going to have multiple characters and multiple environment files and stuff like that, it will be beneficial for you to look into SVG files over using textures. 
And now for building 2D levels, there are a few features in Unity you could be using. If you're making a side scroller type of game, you can use the tile map system, which allows you to paint tiles in a grid. And now tiles are basically sprites you convert to use within the tile map system. So you don't have to like re-export your, all of your sprites and textures from Photoshop or whatever software you're using. So don't worry about that. And actually it's kind of funny because all you have to do in order to convert them is literally drag in and drop your sprite file into the tile map window. <laughs> now, if you're making a game with an isometric perspective and not just like a flat side scroller or top down game, you can also use the isometric tile map or hexagonal tile map, depending on if your assets are rectangular or hexagonal. And let me just say, if you're thinking, hey, they sound like they're pretty similar to each other, you're right, they are. <laughs> they're actually, um, the isometric and hexagonal tile map system are using both the tile map system, like the normal one, um, because they're basically additions on top of the regular tile map system. And that's actually a very good thing because now you just have to learn the tile map system and the workflow, and then you can implement that into the hexagonal and the isometric one as well, because you don't have to learn multiple features now. You can create a tile map through the game object menu and then open up the tile map window through the window menu. You then have to create a new palette and drag in your sprites into this window to convert them to tiles. Additionally, when building levels, snapping also comes in very handy. If you're on Windows, you can hold down Control or Command if you're on Mac and snap objects while moving, rotating, and scaling them. You can also use V to snap vertices together. There's also the package called 2D Animations, which allows you to actually rig 2D characters in Unity. It's in the package manager, just like all the other packages, and this makes it really easy to animate sprites. Using the sprite editor, you can add bones to any 2D character and then use those bones to animate the character within Unity by going to Window, Animation, and then creating an animation in here. Thanks to this package, you won't have to use another software just for the rigging and then re-import into Unity. You can just do it all in one, basically inside Unity. I do also have a beginner's guide video to this, so a full-on tutorial for beginners. So if you're, if you're interested in getting started with this, make sure to check out the link in the description. We were talking a little bit about 2D level building, and I just wanna get back on that point, but actually talk about the technicalities of it this time. So in 3D, we have something called depth, meaning that we can physically move an object farther away from the camera, from the player, and behind maybe even another object to prevent it from being fully visible. In 2D, however, we don't have depth, so we only rely on horizontal and vertical axis. And because of that, Unity has something called sorting layer. Sorting layer is used to determine the render order of each sprite in a scene. Easiest way of accessing the list of layers that we have is by going to Edit, Project Settings, tags and layers. In here, we can unfold layers and then create, remove, and rearrange layers. And keep in mind, very important note here, that the further up the layers are, they will be rendered first. Meaning that the first layer will always be rendered first, but this also means that the objects using this first layer will end up behind the layers below this one. So the sooner a sprite renders, the farther back it is. So therefore, whatever you want to have in the foreground should always have a sorting layer at the bottom of this list. Additionally, after setting the sorting layer, we can also customize the order in layer for a sprite by going to the inspector, which means we're also setting a rendering order within a sorting layer that we just looked at. This is very useful if you, for instance, have a character with a sorting layer named character and you want one of the arms of the character or maybe a leg to be behind the body, but the eyes to be in front of the face. So you can set a higher value for the eyes, but a lower value for the body parts you want behind the torso. And my last tip for this video is there's also the 2D Pixel Perfect package, which allows you to utilize the Pixel Perfect camera component to achieve sharper pixels for your 2D pixelated games. The Pixel Perfect camera component will help you get perfect and crisp pixels regardless of the screen size by making all the calculations automatically for you. We can install this through the package manager and then add Pixel Perfect camera component to our camera. 
Now, one thing we wanna ensure is that we set the assets pixels per unit field of this component to be the same as the pixels per unit of our sprite assets. We can see how high this value is on our assets by selecting a sprite in the project window and see what it says in the inspector. We can then change the reference resolution for the target resolution our assets are designed for. All right, so that should give you a pretty good overview of how to make 2D games in Unity, how it works, and what kind of tips, tricks, and even features you could implement and use in Unity. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure to give this video a thumbs up to show some support, and hit the subscribe button below the video to stay up to tune for new content. Also, make sure to turn on the bell icon so that you get notifications for new videos. Also, are you working on a 2D game right now? Let us know in the comments, and on top of that, if you have any questions or you feel like you want to suggest some ideas to me, for me to make videos out of make sure to leave a comment as well and join our discord server with over 10,000 members actually I think we're at 13,500 members I want to say I'm not sure but I just want to say that <laughs> it's really cool though thank you guys so much for being a part of that community as well um, it's really cool to be running it and really cool to see what people are sharing there if you want to join and become a part of the community make sure to go to the link in the description or simply go to discord.gg forward slash polyrealm this video was meant to be a little bit more like a high level overview of how to make 2d games in unity I didn't want to do like a full-on tutorial on like, oh, this is how you use every single feature because that's pretty much what I'm doing on this channel anyway. <laughs> anyway, I'm not gonna waste any more of your time. So I will see you guys in the comment section and in the Discord server because I'm gonna be super active in those two places. <laughs> I can't speak. So thank you so much for watching. Have a good night and peace out guys. All the time that you wasted, I was saving